Hey guys, this is Davo from Tennis House. Today's topic is the slice. So if you stay with me throughout the whole video, you're going to get the good things about the slice, the bad things about the slice, and most importantly, I will show you technically how to hit the slice. So yeah, bear with me, have fun and enjoy guys. And as always, if you like what we do, take a moment to subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you get the new videos always. And let's get this to it. part I love very much teaching. Um, there are certain points you have to do correctly in order to have a good slice. So one, number one, you have to have a continental grip. It's not going to work with the back end grip to slice it. You're not going to do that. You know, you, you're, certain, you're limited if you don't have the right grip. So you need a continental grip. That's uh, number one. The second thing is, if you have a fence, I'll, you know, I like to use a fence to, to teach the slice. So the second thing is, when you, let's say we're hitting the ball right over there, we have a continental grip, like we said, you need to bring the racket high back. So a lot of players, when they get a slice, they, they have trouble with the slice because they're not taking the racket high enough. So they don't have a long way of uh, acceleration to go towards the ball. So they're here and they're kind of blocking and pushing it back. But you can't do anything with that because you want to rotate up here, have the racket high up here, and then you want to slice it. So you have a longer way and you can put more power on, especially when you see kids or, or weaker players that are just weaker physically and they start here, they're going to have a hard time to slice it. So what I tell my students, if you have a fence and that works always really well, while you take the racket back, the left hand is not just hanging here on the, or on the racket. The left hand pulls the racket while you turn towards you. What it does is it's locking his wrist now. So you have a good firm wrist to go to have a good slice because a lot of players, when you see them playing, they can't take the ball and they break their wrist and they hit the ball too far in front of them. So you need to have a wrist locked. You go up here. So I call it with my students, go high up to the C, right? The contact with the slice, that's the next thing. The contact is where the front foot is. That's kind of right here, right? So on a regular shot, your contact is a little bit more in front of you. On the slice, if we go back, we pull it to the C, we get to the contact, which is right on the front foot, kind of. And you see here, the strings kind of pointing to the other side, knuckle it a little bit up, so you're right there. So as soon as the right arm goes forward, the left arm starting to co go back. So you're in this position right now. So the contact is close to you here. Now, now when you go through contact phase, you go a little bit forward. And then I tell my players, that's why the fence is so coming in handy. You, the bottom of the racket ends at the fence. So that's why it's such a great tool. The take back, the contact, and then the finish here with the butt kept hitting the fence. And that's what's happening on, on a good slice. A lot of times you have to pay attention as well when you see slicers, they're finishing up like this. You need to make sure a crispy nice slice that goes fast over, you kind of freeze here fast. And that fast forward and stopping here and ending like this, going to give the ball that nice penetration, which I'm going to show and you. And right I just now. mentioned to get a crispy, nice slice, you need to start high like we did in the video. So you're starting high and you hit and freeze. You see that that ball stays, skids off and goes fast over. So you start high and you freeze here and you can even freeze a little bit lower here. And you see that ball is going to be penetrating. You don't want a floater. So you really have to make sure you trust your shot. And at the moment of contact right here, you kind of cut that ball, give it a little bit of underspin. And as we said earlier on the video, the butt cap goes to the fence and you freeze. So the slice is very good to change the spins. So if you're in a regular rally and you hit like a top spin all the time and you hit and rally with your opponents, opponents get used to it. So it's not a hard thing to just send the ball back to you and nothing happens. So a good player should have definitely a really good slice to change the spins every now and then. So you can be a little bit more successful over, overall in, in the game. The next thing is if you slice and you, you have a good slice, see that one? So that ball skits off, especially on hard court. That's a great weapon to have. It doesn't come high up. So if you don't go very low on that ball, you're going to have a hard time to sending it back. So you have to bend your knees. And as you saw on that one, the ball just skits off and nothing nothing big for the opponent to do it so they can take initiative and take uh, control over the point if you have a really good slice. Another good thing with the slice is 
when you feel like you have a day or just an off day on the spin, a slice is actually always a good, good tool, as I said earlier, to keep the ball in without missing so you can keep the percentage of the balls you hit over, you just keep that high. And it's and a good thing. One more very important to, thing to is to chip the ball back. If you have a good slice and someone is a good server, right? So you go, you split, and you can just chip that ball deep back as a return. If you start missing a lot of returns um, and you play against a good server, you, you want to have a good slice. You can chip deep back to get into the point. So those are very, very important things. You know, like two the bad two things about the slices are you know, players tend to, there are not a lot of bad things, but players tend to, if you only slice, you know, you, you, you can't take the initiative of, of the point. What I mean by that is, you know, you, you're playing kind of neutral, and if you have a good opponent, they're going to take advantage of you, and they're going to move you around the court, and every now and then, you know, you have to have, like, a good backhand, or obviously a good top spin backhand, or you have to send the ball a good back with a high, deep top spin backhand, um, you can't just slice the whole match. You can, but as I said earlier, if you play good players, they're going to take advantage of that and they come to the net and, you know, that's another weak thing. If you slice only and someone comes up to the net, you can just basically pop the ball up or, or hit them over, but it doesn't have so much pace so they can have an advantage when the opponent is at the net um, to, to put, your vo put the volley away when you slice them back. So overall, I would say only you know, good things uh, to slice. And what I forgot earlier to say is another good thing is if you're in trouble, especially on clay court, and someone pushes you off the court, and you, know, you barely you stretch them and you go back, um, that's, a, that's a good one, especially in the forehand side. You see players a lot doing that when they pushed off the court. So it's, it's an emergency shot back to get back into the point. All right, so that's just a little few pros. Few